Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we're going to specifically look at the intersect mode of On One Photo Raw 2026 masking. This is a new mode that we have with our masking tools. And if you haven't seen the other video I did, which kind of gave the overview of the new masking properties and what's going on with how we can combine the masking tools, check that one out for a deeper dive. I'll show you a little bit of that here if uh, if you're somewhat familiar, been playing around with it already. But uh, the, the main focus of this video is the intersect mode. And real quick, if you like tutorials like this, or you're thinking about adding Photo Raw to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's some offer codes down there. One of them is only valid through October 31st of 2025. That'll knock 10 bucks off the price of anything that On One is offering, including any specials they're running right now. That's uh, unusual for their offer codes. So if you're uh, in the market, take advantage of it. So uh, let's take a look at this masking here to do a quick recap of, uh, of combining tools and then look at Intersect. As a quick recap for what we can do with masking now in Photo Raw 2026 by combining things, I want to darken the sky and darken the, the blue part of the water here. So in our locals real quickly, I'll go and add, uh, I'll start with a gradient, add a gradient here. Let's just take an exposure down of maybe 0 0.3. I'll rotate that around, move it up toward, toward the top of the photo, something like that. And let me zoom out one or two notches and clicking open my masking area, I'm going to add another gradient, but this one I will switch to an edges shape and then position it down here on the lower part of the photo so that I'm really targeting you know, kind of this, this curving area of blue here. And there's a variety of ways we can do it. We can do it with a brush. We can do it with uh, even a line mask using some of the Bezier curve options. But we'll just do like that. And so I have this sum total where I've darkened the bottom and the top of the photo. And I'm not having to use a uh, reflected gradient or something that's a little more rigid. Uh, so that's um, the, uh, the fundamentals of we're working with a target mask for this overall adjustment of, let's just say, darken the blues so we can see that right there and using a couple of different masking layers to accomplish that. Now, what about this intersect mode? This is a new mode that we have. What intersect means is as you're building up these masking layers, if you choose one of those layers to be an intersect mode, that means it's only going to affect parts where the different masking layers overlap or intersect. And uh, we'll work through it by looking at uh, a simple example with a couple of gradients, so it's kind of obvious what's going on. And then we'll do something more meaningful with uh, maybe a, a more advanced kind of dodge or burn technique. So let's have a look here. So let's add a, a new local adjustment. And again, I'll start with just a simple gradient, add it to the screen, and let's just do something very obvious, a very big exposure bump and a very crisp line on that. For the overlay options, I'm going to use the mode of grayscale and show what's affected. I'll collapse that for screen real estate, pressing the O key so you can see what's going on here. All right, let's add a second gradient. So I'll add another gradient to this. Let's add one here. And if I were to like squash this down that way, rotate it around here. I have these two areas. They are different gradients. This top one in the mode, if I change this to intersect, everything just went away. You're like, all right, what just happened? Well, recall intersect means where the masks that you have applied, those mask layers that you've applied, where they overlap is what's affected. So with that in mind, we have our gradient on the bottom. I turn this off, I have the gradient on the bottom. We turn back on the gradient on the top, which is set to be intersect. As I drag that down, maybe even just rotate it, as it encroaches onto the lower gradient, we see the intersection of the two, right? If I switch that back just to add, we have one big gradient covering roughly speaking, the upper right corner, if not half of the photo, and then a second gradient covering like the lower third. When I change that to intersect, 
I will only see the areas that overlap between the two. So that's what intersect is doing. It is a different way of thinking about how you're masking because in, in a strange sense, it's kind of like removing a whole lot of things, but targeting it down to only things that overlap. So how can we use that in practice? You know, where, where would this be, be helpful? Where I like to use this type of technique with intersect is for something like dodging and burning or where I need to do some brush work but I don't want to have like the perfect brush involved. I would rather leverage some of the other range masks to get the job done. And I'll show you what I mean with this photo. Okay, so let's get rid of this adjustment here. Back to the photo. And let's say for this photo, what I want to do is the, the reflections of the, the whites of, the, of the, the mountain there in the water, I want to increase exposure on them. I'd like those to be just a little bit brighter. Uh, so to start with, you know, how can I approach this? Uh, when I when I think of doing something like a dodger burn, I want to target certain tonal regions. I'm thinking luminosity masks. So let's add a new local adjustment. I'll choose luminosity and just say add. And once again, I'll press the O key. Wait, let me do my exposure adjustment. Let's just let's put it up like you know a good you know 0.7. You know something very obvious, so we know that there's been an exposure adjustment. I'll press the O key. We're looking at the mask now. And what I'm interested in is the brighter areas here. And so I like to work visually. I just start working around with the levels to, to make sure that I'm targeting the areas that are brighter, that are whiter. I want those to, you know, to jump, to, to, to pop out more. So something around there. But I want the, uh, the transition so that things get a little bit a little bit exaggerated and again i'm not worrying about most of the photo i'm really just you know, laser focused on this area here because i'm going to leverage intersect to do it okay so there's my first thing it's all right i've got i got a pretty decent you know read on on this uh o key again here on these you know these these whiter parts in in the water so how can i use intersect to uh, to bring those out well um the next thing we can do is we can add to our mask a brush. Now I'll draw just, you know, a basic brush stroke and I'll just kind of lazily draw it through there. This is what we'd expect from add. I have my opacity at 100%. I'm painting in. That's not exciting. That's actually a really terrible looking mask. But when I change this to intersect, look what happens. I am now only impacting things that overlap between the masks. So as I brush through here, you'll see things getting brighter, but only on the particular tones that are within my luminosity mask, right? Yeah, if I, if I kind of brush out into, uh, into the tree line here, like right here, you know, I'm not really having any impact couple of flecks because the luminosity mask, I'll turn off my brush for a moment, the luminosity mask, look how dark all of that is there. There's nothing being applied, right? Black conceals, white reveals. Everything on top of my brush stroke is really what I'm getting at. And the power here, I have the ability to go back to my luminosity mask and say, you know what? I think I need that to be a little more subtle or a little more feathered. Or, you know, the, the levels need to change. I only want those like, really bright flecks of the white to come out. And I can play with the adjustment there and realize going, oh, okay, um, it looks like with my brush reselected, I kind of have to, to taper this out a little bit more through here and maybe take my opacity of my brush halfway down and then, you know, take away Oops, let's get that erase clicked. I did not click that erase. There we go. And take some of that away from where it's really white hot. And I'm, all of this is courtesy of this intersect mode. So once you have, like I like to use it, some type of range mask, usually color or luminosity or both, and using intersect, then you can really refine 
that mask without having to do the painstaking brushwork, right? You know, back to this photo, turning on the O key. You're watching me. I'm just, I'm just pointing right now. I'm just brushing here kind of somewhat lazily through and letting the intersect mode uh, protect me from having to worry about, you know, all the different you know, nuances and, and, and tonal things here that uh, that that are um that would otherwise be much more difficult to brush through so the net net on intersect it is a more advanced mode of doing your masking it does take a little bit of thought about how are the different masks that you're building up going to overlap and it's the power of that overlap that's going to give you these more nuanced looks uh, dodge and burn is usually where I use it the most. But I hope you found this to uh, explain what Intersect is. You can put it to use in your photography. If you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.